Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Theater Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Jikimak II, and I am the Theater Professor. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the new subscribers we've had over the past couple of weeks. You guys are fabulous. And this week we're going to move, be moving back into, back into uh, a little program called Sketch Club. You see it right down there. Uh, I just wanted to show you the little icon bottom left, not Evernote. There it is. That's what we're going to be working on today. I did a tutorial two weeks ago that kind of gave you a little intro to Sketchbook, uh, Sketch Club, and we are going to dive a little deeper. We're going to play a little longer with some of the tools that are in here. I'm going to be doing these over the next couple of weeks. I'm, I've really started enjoying this program. It's not the best program, I'll tell you that. It's not my favorite, but there's some really cool things in it. And so uh, let's go ahead and get started. This week, I'm just going to be talking about the brush tool. There it is. It's a tool. It's a brush. We're going to talk about it. There's some some really interesting things you can do with it. So if you don't already have it, make sure you download it from the App Store. Go ahead, pull it up, and let's look at the brush tool. Well, first off, we click here. You know, we see we're on the brush tool. That's, you know, self-evident, right? The second icon up there with the three lines with the three dots almost looks like a musical, uh, you know, a... Uh, 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 Oh man, I forgot it. It's what are those called? They're called musical bars, no measures, something. Somebody will tell me in the notes, I know. And there's one of my tangents. So we click it and you can see we can select a brush. And what this means is we're choosing what the tip of the brush looks like. And you can see different tips will give you different things. This one's actually kind of cool. Okay, you can even add your own brush. So if I were to go into my photo library, now, I don't really have anything in here, but if I were to click all photos, you know, you could scan through all your photos, which none of these are going to load up real fast. So I'm just kind of scrolling down to some of these. Oh, here we go. So I'm going to pick this one right here. Cannot download photo. Epic fail. Oh, I was it. Oh, got really excited there. So if you have a photo, apparently I don't have any that are usable by the program. Uh, because my iPad hates me. And I want to apologize for that. I didn't think I was going to go into this, but uh, this is actually kind of cool. I don't know why it won't download that image. I'm going to try again from a different location. We'll use this. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I was able to download a picture. This is actually a brush that I made for something else, for Procreate a brush tip. But now you can see it's up there, right? You can change the size here. You can change the opacity. But there is more that you can change with your brush. I'm going to reduce the size a little bit. And if you click the little square with the pencil, suddenly you have a ton of different settings. Now, these settings are similar to things that you'll see in Procreate, in ArtRage, and many of the other different uh, art apps that are out there currently. So let's see what happens with these. And we'll be able to see, we should be able to see how the pen edits in the little box up top. So if I reduce my flow, that's the amount of essentially paint that's coming out, and it affects almost the opacity. Scatter affects where it lands each time we go down. So if my scatter is at zero, it's just going to go in a straight line. But if I take my scatter up to 100, notice how there each time it hits, it's scattering all over the place. Okay. We'll take our scattering back down. Our spacing is the spacing between each time. So think of these as stamps. So if I take this all the way up, there are two stamps there. Okay, so the spacing is how much space or time it takes between each stamp. So if my spacing is up high, there's one, there's another, 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 okay? But if we take that spacing down, can see they're much closer together it creates a little more useful tool okay so that's space I'm going to take the spacing up right now so we can look at some of the other settings we have here rotation is the, the rotation self-explanatory follow um, I'm not sure on that one whoa so let's see what happens if I take follow to negative one everything does look like it's spinning there if we take follow all the way up, 
I don't see much of a change. Some of these, obviously, I'm going to take my spacing down. No, oh, let's keep my spacing up so we can see it. Offset is how much of the rotation is happening. I have a feeling if we, ah, here we go, rotation. I'm going to take rotation down to zero. If we come back up now to spacing, we can see, I'm going to take the size to zero and the spacing jitter to zero. No flipping. There we go. So I've taken my jitter down. Now, each time it stamps, it stamps the same. But I do have so it follows my brush. So as I move along, it continues to follow. So that's your jitter right there. Right now we have it all turned off. This is going to make it a little easier. Let me uh, delete that layer and come to that one. There we go. A little easier to look at things. So now, obviously, you can see scatter. We can see spacing. So if we take spacing all the way down, it's almost like a paintbrush. Take the spacing up just a little bit. Now, if you look close, you can see we have a pattern along the edge. And that's because we don't have any jitter in it. Once we add the jitter in it, we'll see that change. I'm going to take my spacing up a little bit. So again, we can look at our follow and we can we can so you know it's following my brush we'll turn that off for now you can offset it so we're you're rotating it to how so let's offset it to there so now it's a little different looking okay so i'm going to turn off that and that there we go you can see and that's going to affect, so now if we come back into spacing, so now that looks different as you adjust your offset as well, see? Okay. All right. Keep my flow up, take my spacing back out, take my offset down. We scroll down. Now jitter is where you get the randomness, the craziness. We're two wild and crazy guys. The craziness in the brush uh, and how it reacts. It's what helps to create the realistic feel of a brush. So if we jitter the flow, notice how each of them has a different uh, different flow, okay? Uh, different amount of ink or paint coming off the brush. If we jitter the rotation, each of them is going to be slightly rotated differently. If we jitter the size, we get different sizes. And if we jitter the spacing, the spacing's different. And then finally, if you flip it, it'll flip it on each one. So if we were to take everything up, this is what we'd get. <laughs> really horrible brush. A truly terrible brush. Deleted. Deltreated. If you watch Homestar Runner, it makes me giggle. Okay, I'm going to take all those back down. So that's what jitter is. It allows you to create the randomness that helps it feel organic. It helps it feel real. Down here we have taper. So to see the taper, I'm going to come back up to spacing. I want my spacing a little closer. Now, if we look at taper, we can taper the end. Or I'm sorry, that's the start. We can taper the end. Obviously, you could taper both. You can adjust the opacity of the taper. You can <clears throat> Excuse me, you can adjust the size of the taper. So this taper versus this taper. And now we're starting to get kind of like a an ink feel, right? A little ink pen. Next up we have, and I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take those off for now. Next up we have pressure. Now, if you, so if you put the pressure size at this end, now I don't have, so we're not going to actually see it. I apologize for that. I have, I don't have a um, pressure stylus being used right now. I have a regular stylus, so we're not going to be able to see some of this pressure stuff. So I apologize for that. Um, same thing with the flow. So... Again, you know, you're not going to see it on mine because I don't have pressure-sensitive stylus. If you do, go ahead and play with that. 
Next up, we have velocity. Mm, let's see. So the slower I go, the smaller it is. The faster I go, the bigger it gets. And that's with the this setup, with size at that. If we go like this, the faster I go, now the thinner it is. This is actually a better feel because when I do things slow in, say, watercolor or in an, an actual ink pen, not a, you know, not something like a, a ballpoint pen. The slower you go, the more paint's going to be down. Oops, I just changed the color. Let's go back to black. The slower I go, the more paint's going to be, but the faster I go, less paint's going to go down. Um, so that's the changing the size based on that. Then you can do the same thing with flow. So slow, fast, slow. See how it's lighter on the slow sides? Or you could go to the other side. So slow, it's going to be darker, lots of flow. Fast, less flow. See how it gets a little fady and then back slow again. Delete that layer. <laughs> I just like deleting layers. There we go. So slow, fast, slow. Okay. So that's adjusting the flow there uh, using velocity rather than pressure. Okay, so you can do that. We're going to leave them at both at zero because I will change my size and my opacity via the sliders on the bottom. Okay, so these are all the settings you can play with to create a brush. So if we come in here and we want to look at this, I'm going to look. We're going to we're going to up my jitter uh, for not for the flow. I'm sorry for the rotation, and that gives us a little bit of texture and the size. Um, just a little for the spacing. This is what a scatter would do. We've got some cool stuff there. We're not going to scatter right now. We're going to offset the rotation a little bit. So now, if we look at what I've created here, and let me actually go to more of a charcoal -y grayish. There we go. And we start to almost, it's going to take a little bit of work, but you start to almost get the feeling of a pencil. So, because that's what I'm kind of kind of going towards right now. I'm trying to um, see if I had pressure, um, I would adjust my flow based on that, but I don't. So what I might do is adjust my flow jitter. Oh, there we go. And we're getting there. Uh, you know, the tip is not exactly what I would use for a pencil. It's one that I just happen to have. And then, of course, down at the bottom, you can upload this. So you can upload it to the Sketch Club site so other people can use it. You can obviously add another brush with the plus sign up there. You can delete it or you can email it. But there it is. It's down there. It's ready to use. And you can look at so you, all of these in here have very different uses. You could take a picture of something, turn it into a black and white or grayscale photo, and use that. And if you wanted to use it as a stamp, right, because I talked about this in a stamp kind of way, all you'd have to do is turn your spacing all the way up. We're going to keep my flow up. We're going to turn down this, 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 turn off that. And now, if I bring this up, and I'm going to go ahead and clear this canvas. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I can stamp. Let's make it really big. So you could make a, a, a stamping tool if you wanted to. Like, say, your initial or something like that. All right, that's it for this week. We just we looked at the brush, and we looked at the different settings. Um, go ahead and create your own brushes. We'd love to see what you guys are creating brush-wise and um, how you're using it you know make sure again jitter is probably for me one of the most important things to look at because that adjusts so many different aspects of what you're creating um, go ahead and use what they already have in here I mean you could take this one go into it you could adjust everything in here so let's see 
We'll take. I'm just gonna. Right there. Because what can happen is if you use one of the ones they have, you just click reset and it resets it back to where it started. Real easy fix. Uh, doesn't, uh, there we go. I'm not sure I can do that with one that I created. Let's see what happens if I click reset. Oh no, you can only delete it. So the ones that are in there, you can reset you, uh, but you know, have some fun with it. Play with it. See what you come up with. All right, that's it for this week. My name's Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the theater professor, and uh, I'm looking forward to see what, type, what types of art you are creating. So make sure you share them in the comments. Thanks so much. See you guys next week.